Hey guys, this is Nia and today I will be showing you the art supplies or materials that I mostly use to paint with. I'm not sure if this is something you're interested in, but someone did request it, so hopefully this can be something useful for some of you. Let me first go over my drawing supplies. This is what I mostly use, so this first one is my favorite pencil to use, it's the Pentel Sharplet 2. I love how thin and light the pencil is because I'm naturally quite heavy handed. I find that having a light pencil to hold is nice to work with. I have two of these pencils and that's because one I fill with um, HB and the other one with 2B. Ever since I was little, my mom always made me use 2B for some reason, so it's just natural for me to gravitate towards that, but since I want minimal pencil lines, I start using HB and so far I prefer that over the 2B. I think you can use 2B for sketching but the pre-sketch or tracing before painting, I would always use HB because it's not too hard to see that you can't see the lines but it's light enough to cover with paint. For the eraser, I use the Tombow Mono Zero because I find it really handy to get in two small places. It's not the cleanest eraser because I think they do have to make it out of um, a harder material so it won't break considering it's so thin. But my go-to eraser for all usage is this boxy eraser. It's usually around double the length of this but I've used it up and decided to cut the cover so I don't break the eraser because this one is very soft. I love this eraser so much, you really don't have to put much pressure at all when you're erasing and it always comes out very clean. The only downside is that I think they only produce black erasers for this brand for some reason, whereas I prefer having white so I can see clearly if the eraser is clean or not since sometimes I hold my eraser when my hands have ointment and there's pencil residue on the eraser and the ointment and when I try to erase sometimes I get black smudge instead. That's also why I prefer having the cover for the eraser so I know only to touch that part when I'm medicating my hands. I don't really outline my work anymore but sometimes I still do for very fine areas or usually for portraits or figure drawing because I tend to paint in half anime style and for that I like using a brown liner and this is my go-to even though I prefer thinner points but I haven't come across one. This is the brand by Next and I think this is a 0.5. Here are some examples of the painting that I've made using this pen. The next is by Snowman. This is a waterproof pen and I find it so useful. This is actually a Japanese brand but it's very popular here in Indonesia. I used to actually outline my paintings and I used to use this a lot because it's waterproof and it comes in so many varieties of thickness. I like the thinner ones so I use either the 0.1 or 0.05. I don't outline my work anymore but I'd use this to add doodles on top of watercolor painting sometimes just in case I want to repaint some areas. And here are some old paintings which I use the snowman pen for a little bit of the outline. Now I'm going to go over the watercolor paper. These are my go-to just because I have them stocked at home. I like using the Canson watercolor paper and I use Montval for the 200 GSM and Canson XL for the 300. I also use this Arto a lot because I think at the beginning of last year when I started stocking up on watercolor paper, that's the only other brand that they have in the stores and they don't risk stock paper that often so the art shop that I go to had only that in the shops. It's not the greatest but for what I do it's alright and I've gotten used to it. These days the art shop near my house I go to actually stock up on new watercolor paper but I haven't tried the new ones because I still have these ones left. I used to paint on loose watercolor paper but I didn't like how it was hard for me to store my paintings. So in the end, I just turned the A3 sheets into sketchbooks to keep all of my art together and I prefer it that way. I've been using that system ever since and I just find it so useful. 
I paint quite small in terms of size, so having multiple sketchbooks are really handy. If you're interested in knowing how I make these, I do have a Skillshare class on it, so if you're a member, you can go there to watch the class. I also have some Arches Hot Press, which my friend gave me, and also a cold press which I bought from the States. I only use them for special paintings though because I feel bad wasting them if it's only for doodle purposes because the paper is super pricey here so I didn't include them considering I rarely use it but if you do have the means to buy them obviously I would recommend using that because it just produces such beautiful colors. Next up is the paint that I use. At this point, I still use my Holbein most and I use Pantel for galaxy paintings because I look for those very vibrant colors. But this doesn't mean that those are the only good brands. And here are just a few examples of my paintings with the Pantel watercolors. This Koi palette used to be my go-to and my earlier paintings from this channel I've used this Koi set. The only difference is that they're not as vibrant and it does take a while to activate. Some colors are also granulating, but it's really not fair to compare student grade with professional grade. My point is, it still works as watercolors and if you already have paint available in your house, just use that one. I don't use this Koi palette anymore, but considering a lot of people use it and I used it for quite a while too, I just want to show you some examples. So here are the examples of my paintings using Koi. Since the colors are a little bit harder to activate, sometimes it's hard to get vibrant colors. So the painting has this soft feel to them. This is just out of personal experience of how I use my paints though, but sometimes I can push it to its limit to activate enough pigment, but when that happens, the paint usually turns a little bit more opaque. I really don't think that supplies matter too much. If you're new to watercolors or art, the supplies really doesn't define the artist. I personally feel that if you're a good painter, you'll be able to create great art no matter the quality of paint if they're still reasonable to use. The supplies only act like the icing on the cake and enhances what's already a good painting. In one of my old videos, I listed Reeves as one of the student watercolor brands and I got people who said that they're really bad as a brand now, but I feel like if that's the only thing available to you, I don't see why not try to paint with it and give it a go. I personally tried it and I find that it can still create nice colors. Here's an example of a painting I made with Reeves and here's a comparison of my old paintings with Koi. I even find that the Reeves has a certain vibrancy but some colors are just a little bit more muted and it separates when it's first squeezed out of the tube. In addition to my watercolor sets, I also use this Fine Tech Gold palette for any additional accents to my paintings. Especially when it comes to galaxy paintings, I like using them to paint stars or just maybe abstract strokes for backgrounds and things like that. I love the shimmer this paint gives off, but it does take a long time to activate. I've never used any other gold watercolor, so I can't really compare um, any other brands, but I really enjoy using the set so far. For my mixing palette, I use this type of palette. I just find it really handy. I don't know what brand it is, but one of them I actually got from Daiso. Up until then, I didn't know what type of palette suit me, so I tried buying one of them when I was in Japan, and it turns out I really like it. And the next time I bought more, it was around eight to ten dollars. The plastic is slightly thicker, but it has no difference. And Daiso being a 100 yen shop, which is around one dollars compared to a slightly thicker plastic for $10, I'd definitely go for the Daiso palette, but this also depends on what you find comfortable for you to work with. If I'm not filming, I find that using anything else like a plastic plate or anything that has plastic and is water resistant that I can find at home is comfortable enough for me to work with. It really just depends on the functionality you're looking for. I also know that a lot of people use like porcelain plates and stuff like that and 
they work really well with the color mixing because the paint doesn't bunch up together. I have three of these palettes and one I use for my Holbein, the other one I use for pencil and another one that I just bought I'm planning to use for my gouache paints. I like that you can open and close these palettes for good storage and I just find them really useful. Before I go over the brushes, these three items here are also additional supplies that I use quite a bit. The first one is white gouache, which is the Winsor & Newton designer gouache and this works really great for highlights. The next is a small toothbrush, which I use a lot for splatter textures. And the last is a white uniball pen, which I used to use a lot last year, but I prefer just using the white gouache these days. Lastly, I'm going to go over the brushes that I mostly use. There are six main brushes that I usually have on hand and I'm going to list them from the largest to the smallest. The largest one is the Artemedia brand size 8. The next size down is Reeves size 14, then VTech size 2, then Artemedia size 2, and Sekaido liner brush which has the longer bristles and that's also a size 2 and then a scepter gold 2 by Windsor & Newton in a size 0. These are all round brushes except for the liner brush so it's similar to a round brush but just with longer bristles so it can hold more water. Now I'm just going to sample the brushes by making some strokes with different pressures just so you can see the difference in how much they hold water and the sizes they can create with harder pressure or with less pressure. They're all synthetic hairs except for the Art Media and Scepter Gold which has mixed hair and they tend to hold a little bit more water because the hairs aren't as stiff. Considering what I usually paint, I just stick with these round brushes. I also have other types of brushes, but I only use them more for experimental purposes. These brushes right here are the ones that I use a lot. I get a lot of comments about what brush size to use and things like that. And the thing is, as you can probably tell from how I listed the size, the size vary from brand to brand. So if you look at the Art Media size 8, it's actually slightly larger than the Reefs size 14. Ultimately, the brush size just depends on the size you're painting. Like if you were to paint on an A5 piece of paper, even though it's fairly small, the first few layers which would require you to paint quite a large area you wouldn't want to use a size 0 brush, but instead use the size 8 Art Media or the size 14 Reefs since that would make more sense considering that they hold more water and it's easier to distribute them evenly. Then as we move on with the next few layers on top and start sectioning out shadows and things like that, I'd move to a smaller brush and as I get to the final details, I would switch to the smallest brush that I have. So this really varies and the best way to learn is just by trying to paint. People may tell you a lot of things, but I find that unless I try it myself, the concept won't stick to my muscle memory. Instead, it's just going to stay as knowledge or theory and I think that you need to put it into practice for the information you have to have a practical purpose. I'm just going to go through the rest of the brushes and I'll get back to you in a bit. I apologize in advance that the camera wasn't focused enough for this part of the video, but hopefully it's still visible for you to see the brush sizes. I'm also going to make a few strokes and marks with this flat brush. I don't use flat brushes very often, 
but I would use it if I paint more landscape. However, I do think that this brush is handy to have if you're first starting to use watercolor. This is a size half flat brush by Art Media. So those are the supplies that I mostly use when I paint at this point of time. I hope that this video was useful and informational for you and please don't hesitate to ask me questions in the comment section. I do try my best to answer them to the best of my knowledge. If you're still here, thank you so much for watching till the end and I will see you at the next video. Bye!